If they love it, they'll learn it. it it's just so important um, because you can get, you can teach people, you can hammer the details. But what I wanted to do is fall in love with it. Uh, when I was a music teacher, I wanted them to fall in love with music so that when they got to elect, elective, what they wanted to take when they were older, I wanted them to choose music. Um, working in children's ministry, I want those kids, my goal is to have the kids fall in love with God the way God is in love with them. So that when they choose, and you better believe it, when they turn 18 and they go off to college or to the armed forces or whatever it is they're going to do, they're going to be making choices. And it's a real tough choice sometimes because, as we said in the previous session, Sunday morning comes right after Saturday night. And that's very unfortunate. <laughs> um, interestingly, and I didn't want to bog down, we were having, it was a great conversation that was going on at the, uh, the round table, the rectangle table, uh, lunch with the uh, children's choir directors, talking about um, schedule conflicts and, and just the, the angst of trying to get families to come back into church um, I'm, we're, we're a downtown church, so I, you know we get told over and over again after you know Sunday morning you got us, but after that it really is tricky, and and I hear that. But what I also believe to be true is that you offer if you offer something really compelling, they will come to it. If it's raining the day of the big Christmas concert with orchestra, oh you're going to see them in church. If it's raining on Easter, oh you better believe you're going to see them for Easter. If it's raining the Sunday after Easter, you know the roads were slick and we just couldn't get in. The, so if you if we give people compelling reasons to want to be here, some of these fights. I mean, think about soccer. Does a soccer coach care what your schedule is? Does a soccer coach call up the parents and say, "We don't want to be an inconvenience to you and your family," as if, right? They're like, "Here's when the games is. Here's when our five practices are. Yeah, you just get there." And all the parents go, "Okay, coach, we'll do it." Um, I don't want, I, I feel like as a church, we have a responsibility to, to be kind to our parents and not throw those kind of demands like what, because what, you know, we're also about grace and love and salvation and all of that wonderful stuff. And so we don't need to be heaping more responsibilities. That said, if we make it really compelling, I think what we find is those kids want to be there and they start dragging, there's mom, you've got to get me to church. You don't understand it. We are going to build Daniel the Lion's Den out of Legos, and I cannot miss it, which we do on Sundays all the time. Um, so, a little bit more about the overall philosophy. Every once in a while, you get a real gift as a music teacher. As a music, and I don't mean like treble clef earrings. I mean, I have nickel for a treble clef tie, treble clef coffee mug. I just, all right, okay, thank you, Music in Motion. All right, um, but I got a real gift. So I told you I taught elementary music in inner city Dallas, and every once in a while, I'm in Fort Worth now, but Dallas is real close, and uh, so I'll go over there every once in a while, and every once in a while I'll go to my old school just to see how people do, and I'll, if, I, if the publisher sent me some resources, I always make sure my old school gets a copy of it, because I just, you know, it's enough for them just to, to deal with what they're dealing with, I don't go out and buy stuff, and as we all know, we all buy stuff with our own money, because we love children. Um, and I got to see Miss Kano. And she had been a teacher's assistant while I was there, and she was still there. Hey, Miss Kano, how are you doing? And great. And how, hey, how's Roxanne? And Roxanne was one of her students. Great, great. She said, Oh, Mr. Burroughs, did you hear about Stephanie? I'm like, Stephanie, Stephanie Ojeda. <clears throat> I'm like, No. She goes, yeah, You'll never believe this. She got into the Boston Conservatory on a, on a full voice scholarship, and she's singing opera now. And I went, You mean. She kept singing after, even after I left. She goes, Mr. Burroughs, they all kept singing. Mm -hmm. oh. I can never tell that story! Ah. <laughs> that was the greatest gift I, I, that may be the greatest gift I've ever gotten as a music teacher. It was just like, that's, yes, that's what I want. I don't care if 99.9% .9 of them aren't going to be professional opera singers. Perfect. They're not going to be organists or music directors, but they're going to be music lovers. They are going to be people who. Uh, sit in worship and 
<clears throat> sing a new song, sing an old hymn, and uh, so that's what we're trying. We're trying to get them to fall in love with it, so they can't when it's Sunday morning or Saturday night or Sunday evening or wherever they go. I need to be at church. I need to be at church. So um, we do a lot of that. Do what we do as a choir director. Let's do a, a simple brain break. Here I put your. We're going to get up a lot because it's the post lunch session, right? I have a feeling people that designed this whole week planned this workshop before you. This messy movement. So let's all stand up. Very simple exercise. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put our kids here. We're going to shake this hand five times and go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll shake this hand five times and go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll shake this foot five times and go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll shake this foot five times and go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll shake this hand four times and go one, two, three, four, and so on. All right, count out nice and loud. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. Good, your friends kiss. Have a seat. Lots of good applications for that. First of all, if in acquired practice, we always need a good brain break. You know, you've got you can see them scrunching, and you know you, you if you work a little bit harder, you're gonna lose them. You need to get do a little something. All right, stay loose, stay loose, and then go. Another great way to use this um, activity is if you work with youth choirs. Because, man, let me tell you, teenagers are the worst about coming in on Sunday morning and they're just dragging. And the, but that gets them up. And so get, and without admonishing them, you're just saying, all right, let's do one, two, three, four, five. And a really good uh, usage of this, it was unexpected. And I just tried it one time and it worked. And I tried it again and it worked. And I tried it again and it worked. <laughs> Done. Is um, We've got our kids, we've got our children's choir. And we practice all the time in this great, safe environment in the choir room where we've got the. You know, the cat poster over here, and we got the bust of Beethoven's head over there. Or whatever we got, the folders, it's all great. It's all safe, it's all cozy. And then what do we do? We take them into this gigantic room, and we make them face a bunch of people. That some of them they know, some of them they don't know. Some of them are smiling, some of them are scowling. Go, okay, sing. Um, so this is a really good way, if you, that's kind of your rhythm, and you have very limited time, you can be in the sanctuary, and they're in the space, and you know it's really big, and they're really small. Is like, all right, you belong here. You belong here. And they, you can tell them that to you blue in the face and go, uh -huh. day by day. <laughs> so what you do is you do one, two, three, four, five. You can do it super loud. And they're all laughing and they're high five and they're like, all right, the, the, we, we made a noise and the room didn't buy us back. We're going to be okay. So those are simple uses for that. All right, I want to uh, go to some resources. We've done, um, earlier on, I did a, we did a reading session, Singing Your Way Through the Bible. but. There's a lot more to uh, children and music and worship arts than a stack of anthems. Uh, those are great. Those are important. But I want to point out a few resources. Some of these are going to feel like old hat to me. Um, one is Holly Holly. We sing the world around. I think I've got that. Um, yeah. It's put out by Chorister's Guild. And I'll leave a copy up here. Um, one of the things that... We, who here, and I asked about this before in a different workshop, how many are I would, what you call a traditional church? Okay. How many of you would say you're kind of at a blended? How many of you would say uh, contemporary? Okay. All right. Some of you raise your hand multiple times. Great. Yeah. Um, so there's something about world music that is a real, can be a real consensus builder because it feels traditional enough that it's from a tradition. It may not be from your tradition, but it's from a tradition. So that it kind of it has that steeped in tradition feel to it, yet it has a newness. If you're used to doing, you know, hymns and uh, Bach cantatas or you know things like that, it, this can feel really fresh and new. So it, it can have a little bit of both. There can be a lot of energy uh, to it. And and the thing I like about this resource is they're all really singable. Sometimes you get you get some world music in your hands. It's like just getting past the language is really really hard. It's daunting, and you're like, boy. Um, so it, this is a really well thought out resource. Simple songs, simple little congregational songs, and I'm going to teach you one now. Um, say tu mamina. 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 Yeah, and that means send me Lord into the world. Is it Zulu? Is it Zulu, Brian? I think so. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Tu mamina. 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 All right, so sing after me. Tu mamina, tu mamina, tu mamina, tu mamina, 
Tu maminan kosiyam. Tu maminan kosiyam. Let's do the whole thing. Here we go. Tu mamina, tu mamina, tu mamina kosiyam. And yes, I realize it's ironic to do a basically a, ble a benediction at the beginning of this session, but here's what we're going to do. Say, so what are we going to do, Mr. Mark? What are we going to do, Mr. Mark? Thank you for asking. Let's all stand up again. So, we're going to sing tu mamina kosiyam, but here's the deal. There is a little handshake thing, which here, we're going to show how it's done. So, it starts like this. You're going to do shake. Thumbs, shake, and snap. And if you're snap challenged, and a lot of our kids will be snap challenged, just do a big old fist pump like that, all right? So it's like thumb, like shake, and thumbs, and shake, and snap. Shake, and thumbs, and shake, and snap. Find a partner and try it. Ready? Go. Shake, and thumbs, and shake, and snap. Shake, and thumbs, and shake, and snap. Now, we're going to be singing to Mamina, which means say to me, Lord, into the world, not shaking thumbs and shaking. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? All right. So, as if that weren't enough, we're going to sing it all the way through nice and loud. We'll do all. We'll do the shaking thumbs and shaking snap, shaking thumbs and shaking snap. Then I'm going to say switch, and you got to find a new partner. Oh. Right. Get ready. Here we go. Two. and then we go have brunch. And what, what happens is when you do worship like this, you can keep it, okay, full confession, I am actually, on the in, extrovert, introvert, I'm strongly introvert. I've taken that test a number of times. I know it's weird. I'm up here in front of people. I will collapse tonight. I'm just going to either get under a blanket and suck my thumb. Um, you're, all, you're all very nice people, and I like you very, but that's just the way I am. That's the way I was made. Um, so some of us can be a little bit, uh, oh, you know, when passing the peace. If you remember the first time you ever did passing the peace somewhere, and you're like, are we supposed to do this? Are we supposed to look at each other? And, yes, go for it. And what happens is the first time it's really awkward, right? It feels weird. Maybe the second time it's weird. But eventually you just kind of start smiling and you can't help it. Um, and it's just so much richer. And it's just the, you, you smile more. The room lifted when I was not the one giving you instructions, but you were feeding off of each other. That's that's if they love it, they'll learn it. And when you can create that in your rehearsals, we, I would do that with the, the youth choir and my older kids' choir, and they love it. Listen to Mommy now. Um, tons of stuff in this resource that's just like that. Here's another one that's similar. Um, not as many songs, but it's got a great devotional component to it. This is called Put Your Arms Around the World. Um, it's a Shh. I'm not going to I'm not going to get too Wesleyan on you. I promise. All right. But what I like about this resource is it's got several world songs, but it's also got a devotional piece that you can read. You can tell the story about, and it's got full color pictures, so the kids can see that while you're reading about the kids from that place and some of their experience, and then you teach them the song once again. Super simple song. So let me teach you this song. This is one called, Oh, Who Will Build the Church Now? It's from Kenya. I've got a soft spot in my heart for Kenya. I don't have time to go into it now. Um, so for this one, I, it's a kind of a, got a call and response part to it. So I will sing, Oh, Who Will Build the Church Now? And you'll sing, We'll build it together. Let's practice. Oh, Who Will Build the Church Now? We'll build it together. Oh, Who Will Build the Church Now? We'll build it together. 
together. This is the super fun part. And it doesn't mean anything, it just happens. It goes like this. Yo oh 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 yo oh 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 yo oh 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 yo oh 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 yo let's try that. Ready? Go. Yo oh 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 Teaching. Okay, here's the right notes. And it's like, here's my part, here's your part, go. And have you ever been out to eat with percussionists? Okay. And they're constantly banging on stuff. And if you, you drop your fork and you look down, and they're just packing. Um, singers are the same way. And I used to get so frustrated. I guess I kind of still do get frustrated, but I understand it better when as soon as the choir director stops, everybody wants to talk. And it's, no, I'm trying to give you instructions to make it better. Well, the reason is because that's why they're there. Their voices have been warmed up. They are primed to move those mouths. So the more we can get them singing without having to stop, and no, 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 listen to your part, though. Um, even if it's a brain break. But you can use those songs in worship. Um, so we were talking about different names for, what, not calling it a choir, per se, in the roundtable lunch. And, uh, one of the things that our, what we used to call the junior choir, we now call the junior worship leaders. Because we really, we want to instill in them that, that you're not performing. You're, it's, and we're not trying to shy away from the choir part, but we're trying to empower them to say, you're leading worship here. This is a worshipful moment. It doesn't always have to be uh, an anthem. It can be as simple as a song from another culture. All right. And the last resource I want to show you, and we'll kind of come back and forth. This is, again, I say rejoice. This is the shit. Warning, warning, shameless self-promotion, yeah. warning. This is a, a resource I did with Courtiers Guild, so you can, it's available at the Courtiers Guild booth. It's 35 songs, and as I said in the previous session, I, I you know, whenever I just kind of go off somewhere and write something, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. It, it, you know, those kind of isolationist kind of tower, you know, with composer going off and someone writing. These were all written out of big spirit meeting. I need a song for this. I need a song for a worship service. I can't, I can't spend more than a minute teaching the congregation because I'll lose them. Boom, 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 boom. So songs with a lot of movement, simple stuff. So let's do another one. All right, get your, put your stuff in. You get some of you going to need All right, so let me see. All right, I'm going to sing something. If this pertains to you, just do what the song says. If you are a girl, stand up. If you are a girl, turn yourself around. If you are a girl, wave your hands up high. If you are a girl, sit down. Gee, what am I going to do next? If you are a boy, stand up. If you are a boy, turn yourself around. If you are a boy, wave your hands up high. If you are a boy, sit down. If you like broccoli, stand up. If you like broccoli, turn yourself around. If you like broccoli, wave your hands up high. If you like broccoli, sit down. If you like spaghetti, stand up. If you like spaghetti, turn yourself around. If you like spaghetti, wave your hands up high. If you like spaghetti, sit down. And you can do all the verses you want, but you always end with this one. If you're a child of God, stand up. If you're a child of God, turn yourself around. If you're a child of God, wave your hands up high. If you're a child of God, sit down. <laughs> Simple song. Uh, it's a great one to do for with the first Corinthians 12 about how it's many uh, members yet one body. Um, just point out the different, you know, I, I hate bumper sticker isms. Things that just sound, they, they flow off like the children are our future. It's a perfect bumper sticker when it just makes my skin crawl. Because um, they're not our future, they're right now. They are right now. I mean, ooh, I got two of them, and they are very much right now. Um, but yeah, just anything that, you know, like 
with this particular song, you know, oh, we're all the same. Well, we're different. To celebrate the difference, it's like, no, it's both. It's the balance between the both that, that, that's so enriching. So that song kind of highlights that. Well, I might throw some other songs as we need brain breaks. As I tell another group, I've got that little Fitbit thing in my brain that beeps at me when I've done too much talking. I mean, I know I'm the presenter for this, but I can only stand so much me. Um, my wife trained me well. All right. So, um, <laughs> So uh, one of the things that's a real trick, we were just talking about this, is how to, how to get the room back together and how to draw people in. And that can be really tricky. And what, one of the things I think is really important is as much as possible to approach it from a positive standpoint. Uh, because I feel very passionately that I do not want the word that kids remember hearing in church the most to be, shh, right? Would you just be quiet? Okay, because quiet does not equal good, still does not equal good. Those are, just, you know, we keep, we always, we put those words on people, and that's a lot of pressure. Um, so try to find ways to gather the attention to get the room with you without having to admonish. So, of course, this is one of the tried and true. And I don't know why that particular rhythm seems to be the universal. It just is, right? But we all kind of start with that, and then... magical phrases I think for kids are once upon a time <laughs> and let's play a game and anytime you can get you can get, what was that? that that was my whole point of that was to get your attention so that we can move on to the next thing yeah maybe there was a little bit of oral skills in there but just barely it was really about gathering the room together but because it was through a game oh Oh, and you're like the cool. You're already the coolest person ever, right? I mean, and you're, I mean, you're the choir director. You're the one with the music and all. Uh, but that just that tips the scales even more. Um, a fun, another fun one to do because that one had, you know, all these things. It's about rotating and then making them feel fresh, so that it's not doing the same thing over and over again. Because then it just starts to, oh, uh, it's just all right, blah 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 blah. So anyway, blah blah blah. Um, so mixing some new ones in. Um, just getting people to match your face. And when I take a youth choir on tour, it will be somewhere and I'll start singing that pitch. They'll start to harmonize because they want to show off, right? They want to like, ooh, listen, we're, and we're a choir. You know, it's a typical youth choir thing. They, everybody, they need everyone to know at all times that they are a choir. You got to love them. Um, but it's a, that's another simple one to do. It's, and that uses another uh, skill, a pitch matching skill. And then my favorite one, whenever I go to, uh, I do, a, I'm also Mr. Mark. Well, I'm always Mr. Mark. But sometimes I'm Mr. Mark in the sense that I'll go to an elementary school to do a, a music show. And, it's a, and so we'll have all the kids in the auditorium, like 300 or 400, whatever. Um, if they're cheap and only want to pay for one show, they'll have all 800 of them. And that has happened. And boy, that's a lot of kids. Um, and the, the principal's like, you get, um, we can get quiet. We can get quiet. I'm like, I got this. And they're like, no, no, no. We, we'll, I'll, we'll just, well, I'm like, it's OK, really. And so I just sit at the front of the, on the stage. If you can hear me clap once. And I don't say it any louder than that. Like two people clap. If you can hear me, clap twice. Maybe 10 people clap. Three times. All the people are like, what? Wait, what's going? Something's going on that we're not a part of. Right. Um, and then, if you can hear me, clap six times. And, and now I've got the people in the very back of the room. Hi, my name's Mr. Mark. I'm so happy to be here. We're gonna have so much fun. You wanna have fun? Yeah. Let's start with the voice. Okay. Okay. And then we're ready. And that's all you gotta do. Because you know the voice doesn't. You can't. It, it's it's. You know, every every September, like August, really, um, when it was time to get started with the school year, man, that first week, that first Friday, I just, I was white. I, the, I, the tea with the lemon and the honey and the cough drops, and it's like your teaching muscles are actually, and it happens with, the, with you know, children that first week back, and you're like, that was only a 30-minute rehearsal. Why do I feel like I've been gargling razor blades? Um, so um, that that is really important, and just... In that same mindset with the admonishment, um, 
we're going to get into this a lot more in the um, Fix a Flat workshop about the importance of um, really diagnosing things and not just a quick fix. Because one of the things is with a say what you mean without saying it mean, mean or angry or with a point to it, that's typically because we, usually when I'm like that, it's because I'm feeling rushed. Like there's not enough time and I'm starting to feel the pressure and it's like, bases are flat. Well, that has never helped the bases be unflat. Yeah. Um, it just makes them feel sad. It makes me feel bad. And of course now I'm spending the whole time trying to validate why I get to be mad at them for their flatness. And it just puts a whole lot of negative energy in the room. So in, in that drawer of if they love it, they'll learn it, is taking the time. There is no piece of music that is so important that, that you can't just stop. Okay, so what I'm looking for here, and then go. Um, and if, if it's not 100% um, when you're singing it in worship, okay, it's not the end of the world. But what's more important to me than that being a... And I really like the music to be good. I mean, I'm a stickler. I really want the music to sound good. That's important to me. Because I think one of the things that, that they'll love is when they sound good and they know it. Yet, I'm not, I'm not willing to sacrifice um, hurting feelings. And when you're in a choir, as you know, I think dance may be the only other one that's quite like this. When people feel so self-conscious. Because, you know, if you're watching... If you're ever playing tennis and you miss the ball, what's the first thing you do? You look at your racket. <laughs> so, what? 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 what, 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 what so when you're singing, there's, you're it. When you're dancing, you're it. I think that's why some people are so self-conscious about dancing. Because um, it's, it's moving. It's just any kind of movement. Singing, it's any kind. It's just, you know. Um, so anytime we can use grace and say what we mean. And really say what we mean. And usually what we mean is something that, that we, we need to get to the root and not just, bleh, bleh, you're flat, you're sharp, you're not watching me, um, with kindness. All right, it's time to bring out one of my favorite tricks, and this involves a puppet. So one of the things that we all have is we, we do have time crunches, right? And the kids, by and large, are going to learn the notes and rhythms faster than they're going to learn the text. At, in the reading session earlier, there was one song, The Beatitudes. They're going to learn the tune real fast. There's a lot of words in the Beatitudes. And so you, you're, you're kind of doing two things at once. And the music is here, and the words are way back here. When I taught elementary music, I taught in a bilingual school. So the, let's take Jingle Bells, for example. Man, the tune, done, done. And they knew Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. That's the easy part. That's like the La Bamba part of La Bamba. Bamba, 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 Bamba. Bamba, Bamba. So they had the Jingle Bells part, but the dashing through the snow and a one horse open sleigh for Spalmer, Texas. We have never seen the one horse open sleigh. Um, bell, bells on Bob. I mean, there's a lot of strange words to be throwing at kids. God bless them. The English was not their first language, and even a lot of English speakers will have a hard time with some of those words. So, we all know one of the tricks and one of the ways to make it fun, one of the ways to get the kids to love it so they'll learn it, it we've got to get the reps in. That's just got, that's part of it. And repetition is the mother of knowledge. We kind of know that, but how can we do some reps without it feeling repetitious? So I have a puppet friend here, and um, it's just what I grabbed. And um, actually, I'll, I'll tell you about the octavo I'll give you in a little bit. This is, a, this is Sevi, and this is a kind of a prototype for another puppet called Octavia that I also made. Uh, Hi, everybody. So, Hello. I said, all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, but why don't you tell them? You can do it. All right. So, I, I heard you singing Jingle Bells, and <coughs> well, I thought well, it would be kind of neat, because if I, if I sing a little bit of it, but, but if I mess up, if I sing some of the words, the, the wrong words, will, will you tell me? Will you be my teacher? Yeah? yeah. Okay. <coughs> Dashing through the snow in a one hippo open sleigh. No. It's not a hippo, it's a one horse. 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 Okay, let's try again. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open for bed. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Sleigh. Okay, <clears throat> I know I can do this. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, burping all the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
laughing. The laughing. Okay, so you see the point, right? So you get a little further in the song each time, and the kids think it's hysterical, especially if you work gas into it. <laughs> so you just you just keep it going. You keep it going, and the, and then. And at the very end, he makes all the way through, and the kids clap, and, oh, thank you, you were such good teachers. And, uh huh, yeah. Well, I'll, okay, I'll ask. You know, Sebi wanted to see if maybe we could all sing it together one time. Yeah! And what do they have? They nail it. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal you haven't been playing the pitches at them, you haven't been screaming the words at them. Come on, we've gone over these words. That what they got to be the teachers, which what the kids love to do, especially little kids. What do they do in the summer playing school, right? That's what they do. They love it. And they love being a teacher. So the pressure is off them. They've learned it in a whole new way, and it makes the learning that much stronger. It's hysterical. They've had fun. It hasn't felt repetitious. Um, you've got another teacher in the room, so they get to pay attention to someone besides you. I can't recommend enough having a puppet friend. Um, there's great puppet, uh, like Folk Manis does these wonderful puppets. Um, get one that works for you. Find a voice that's a little different than your voice, but the one that you can do. Like, I can do Grover for about two minutes, and then I've just got, I can't do it. It hurts. Frank Oz, man, I don't know how he did it. Um, but find a puppet that you can work with, and that puppet can be like, if you had a clinician come in, and like to work with your choirs, or if you had a situation, and the clinician is saying the exact same things that you tell the choir all the time, and they're looking at the clinician like they are a rocket scientist, like they are the greatest thing to say. They just told us to sit up tall and breathe, and you're like, I'm telling you this all the time. Uh, but that's it. So your puppet is like your guest clinician. Right? On a much lower budget. And the puppet can, <laughs> the puppet can tell all the kids stuff, but you, what you won't, don't want to do is you don't want to overuse the puppet too much. Mm -hmm. So, the, so I, at church I've got, and, and Folk Man I don't know if they still got it, had this cute uh, mouse with a little vest, and it had a little pocket watch. It, you know, it looked like something out of uh, Alice in Wonderland, and he's Charlie the church mouse. Mm -hmm. And he comes with me some, when I go work with the threes and fours, and we do our little Bible songs, and they love Charlie the church mouse. And I, sometimes they'll ask, and I'm like, you know, Charlie's resting right now, so, this, so probably next week maybe, and so it's a real treat. So do that, do that sparingly. If you're if you work in a, in a public school situation, you have a nutcracker that does that. And, um, so fun, fun, fun. So that's another way to mix it up. All right, break, break. This is not this is an oldie but a goodie, but I love it. The the kids love it. The youth love it. The adults complain about their knees. All right. We all know the song, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. Some of you are already nodding. Uh, but let's go through it one time. So let's just sing the song. Here we go. My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. My Bonnie Lies Over the Sea. My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my Every time we sing a word that begins with a letter B, we stand up. The next time we sing a word that begins with a letter B, we sit down. Now, we can add a, an educational wrinkle to it. Um, when I was working with an academy in Kenya, and we were trying to teach uh, the, the kids there some of the, the music terms and saying, okay, there's these Italian music terms, just they've been around for hundreds of years. So you can be in an orchestra in Japan, you can be in a choir in Kenya, you can be in a, in a band in Canada. And adagio will mean the same thing. It means slow. So no matter where you are, no matter what, adagio will mean the same thing. And, it kind of, and they're, they're fascinated by that. So what you can do is say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing the song adagio, which is a good tempo. Adults tend to like that one. All right? <laughs> we'll do adagio. Ready? Here we go. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the Oh, bring back my body to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my body to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my body to me. Good. And you can do it. Okay, now we're going to do it. I'm not. 
Uh, now we can help do it uh, allegro. Now we're going to do presto. It's a great way to teach musical terms. You can do it with adult choirs and have the basses and, and altos be sta start standing while the sopranos and tenors start seated and then you can make yourself seasick. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to, to teach some stuff. Um, okay, let's do a little bit with percussion. Um, I hope you're going to be going to Brian Dean's percussion stuff because he, he's the man. He's right back there and he's the man. Um, but here's a couple of things because music is so much more than choir. I think a lot of us that's kind of our safe zone. We grew up in choirs uh, and so that's kind of what we know. But one of the, the other great access points for group music making is percussion because I am a percussionist. You know, there's no embouchure, there's no. <laughs> so, you're, all you have, you're making, you're, you're percussionist, you're making, you know, we've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> where did my tape go from where my fingers are supposed to go? Um, all right, so uh, palma, the, let's just start with some body percussion. Palmas is one of the... Um, it's used in flamenco music, which is popular in Spain. If you've ever listened to the Gypsy Kings, they use palmas. It's just rhythmic hand clapping that can be a, you know, by the way, the sound of one hand clapping is this. Yeah, take that. All right. Um, always, always looking for the other way around. Um, so we're going to do a, a hand clapping thing, and we're going to start with a steady beat. And I'm not going to say, I used to say, let, let's just clap a steady beat. There's no just about it. If you've ever been to any sporting event, steady beat is really hard. Right? And there's some kids you have who would be great at all this crazy stuff, but man, they couldn't keep a steady beat for a while. There's... All right, so here we go. Steady beat. Okay, now steady beats fine, but it needs a little kick to it. So we're going to do a wasabi rhythm. It's like this. Wasabi, 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 wasabi. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Cut the room in half. Like that. I guess sorry about your arm. Okay. Um, so you're going to be group one. Group one is going to clap a steady beat, and then we're going to let group one keep clapping a steady beat, and then I'll bring group two in on wasabi. All right. So group one, two, ready, go. Some Bible, you can set that with the Bible. You can do a oh, clap your hands together, all you people, and, and have a group speak that while you're while you're accompanying it rhythmically. Uh, if you're doing a choir concert, having a, a percussive piece in there somewhere is a great way to break it up because we feel very strongly about every single piece of music that we are prepping, but we also have, have been parents or aunts or uncles in those talent shows and piano recitals and concerts, and you're like, how many till the last one? Um, so one of the things that's going to really help with buy-in with the parents, who are the ones with the driver's licenses that get the kids to the rehearsals, is to make, if you do an evening program, is to make, to give it a little bit of variety, give it a little bit of that pop. Also, the, you know, you're going to have body kinesthetic learners. That's the number one way they learn. They're not oral. oral. They're not um, verbal linguistic or visual. Their primary way of learning is through their body. And so they may be incredibly gifted musically. But if all we do is choral music, we're never going to know that. Their, their gifts, their spiritual gifts will go unrealized. And um, that's really important. Also, with per percussion, it's a great way to recruit uh, kids to the choir. I don't mean, I don't... I don't mean to sound gender biased to say that boys like drums and girls don't. I've got a 13-year-old who just is gaga over percussion. Um, but what, what we notice as the kids get older, the, 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 the boy-girl ratio really starts to skew in choirs, right? Um, one of the things that can really help bring some of those boys back, look, okay, remember Siahamba? Remember the 90s, Siahamba? Every choir ever did Siahamba. And, uh, and I had mostly girls in the choir and a couple of boys. I'm like, okay, what's a boy? I'm like, Hey, you, you can play drums a little bit. It's like, yeah, I'll play a little bit. I'm like, all right. Well, we see someone to play a little djembe on this. And yeah, okay. 
so great, we're going to see a hum. It's like, you know, that's not too hard. Can you, you mind kind of just kind of singing out a little bit? We don't, we need, you know, yeah, sure, I'll sing out. Next thing you know, I got a singer. It's like, hey, you know, we got this other piece, and da da da. I got another guy in the choir. Mm -hmm. um, and we did, and so when we go on choir tour, we would always have a couple of percussion pieces. And that got him in, and next thing you knew, they were singing. Now, was it sneaky? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and they ended up liking, they ended up liking choir more once they got past the stigma and seeing that there were that, that choirs for girls. Oh, well, not necessarily. Um, <clears throat> so that's a good way to use percussion. Also, just uh, using uh, percussion and body rhythms to do scripture. Let's all stand up and do one. I did this with a, a group in my first session. We'll do that now. That is. Uh, Luke 10, 27 goes like this. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. Let's do that together. Ready? Go. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your soul. And with all your strength. And with all your strength. Let's do that all together. Ready? And go. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your strength. Next is, you shall love the Lord with all your mind. You shall love the Lord with all your mind. And your neighbor as yourself. Who? And your neighbor as yourself. Who? Right. That huh is not technically scriptural. Right? <laughs> it's, yeah, so it's implied. All right, here we go. Let's do the whole thing nice and loud. Ready? Go. You shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. You shall love the Lord with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Who? Scotch. I don't think that was her real name. Um, and she did this beatboxing thing to My Funny Valentine. It had a Bobby McFerrin thing. So she played the piano with one hand, held the microphone together, and did that beatboxing thing, and then sang. You know, Bobby McFerrin makes it sound like he's doing two things at once, which is unbelievable. He is so much more than Don't Worry, Be Happy. And I, I just try to tell people, oh, she was doing it. I'm like, that is so cool. And so I started playing around with it. I'm like, I can't beatbox. And you know, really what it is is just combinations of of consonants and that's just a lot of different mouth sounds. So we're going to do a few. So uh, let's do a do, do. So it's just like the letter D. It's like do, but not quite so dumb. Do, but do. do. Mm -hmm. Now let's put a. Uh, let's do a K H. So it's like a K with peanut butter in the back. So. So go do 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 do. That's it. So now you're beatboxing, right? Yeah. You're, you, you're actually pretty legit. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> now one of my favorites is to do the um, to, the techno beat, and, and this will this will be relevant. You're gonna, some of you are probably going, okay, uh, Mr. Mark. Aside from making a joyful noise, what does this have to do with church, the Bible, children's choir? It, it, it'll happen. Um, I think. All right. So, but I've got to teach you how to do the techno <coughs> drum sound. So first, we got to start with the glottal. The glottal is when you, you, you build up that air and the, at the vocal cords and then you let it loose and it pops. If you've ever worked with teenagers, you know the glottal sounds like this. <laughs> Dad. So everybody do, everybody do your glottal. Right. Now for the techno beat, it's gotta, you've got to stop it. So it's going to come across like this. So you kind of put the tongue at the top of your mouth. You don't want the throat sack to come out like a frog. Um, so don't hurt yourself. Music's not supposed to hurt, but go. That's pretty good. Now, the, the, the second half of that is, so it's like T-S-T. -T, real short. Now go. And then go. Now go. 
<laughs> right, so that's the end of it. Now, one possible use, which may not ever happen to you, I was the MC for a uh, the United Methodist Women, their style show. <laughs> it was a fundraiser. All the models were uh, 65 or older. They were adorable. They had their CD with all of their runway music picked out. I think the racist thing was some Michael Buble. I mean, it was Tony Bennett, you know, Frank Sinatra. I mean, it was just the CD player was on. And so what I did, I taught everybody else that was there at the tables how to do the So these ladies just coming out. They were just so cute. I thought, yeah. So the other use, you may not be able to use that at your church, but this one you will. Um, we're going to do a Bible story. I, I love to do Bible stories with sound effects. It's a great thing. One of my favorite ones to do is Esther. And, uh, and I got the idea from um, in... Purim is the holiday where the, the Jewish holiday where they they do the, the story of Esther and whenever the name of Haman the bad guy is read they have an instrument called the groggers and it just makes this big rattly sound and it drowns out the name I thought well that's kind of cool what if we had a different sound for each of the different main people in that story like Esther Vashti people forget about Vashti um, and yeah and then the king and then Haman and Mordecai and each one has their own sound and so this one is kind of similar to this one is about David. Uh, dancing before the ark, and I love this story. I did this in a children's worship service um, about dignity, because I think we, we get real worried about the dignity of church, and I, and I think dignity has its place, but dignity can be overrated. And what I loved was our ministers. It was we were doing vacation Bible school, and uh, our thing was Operation Overboard. It was a deep sea thing, and so we have the spirit stick, which always goes to the kids in the assembly, the different grade, and it was a snorkel. And so on the very last day in the worship service, here they come down and with their flippers and their, you know, they're like a little bunch of penguins coming down with the snorkels. And I'm like, how wonderful is that? That they, that the, the senior minister and associate minister and the senior, you know, they all would allow themselves to, you know, I think sometimes we get carried away in thinking that church is about making us look good and that's why we want the choir to sound great so we can look in good at the accolades. Church and, and worship has nothing to do with making ourselves look good. It's about... In the case of David being a fool for, for God and just allowing himself to, to, to a king to not be the one dignified. So, all right, there's my soapbox on that. So for this one, you're going to listen very carefully, and there are going to be three different sounds you're going to hear. One is King David. Whenever you hear me say King David, you're going to go, doo, 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 doo. let's practice that. King David. Hey, thank you for doing the horn thing. I always have to tell people, but you get it, all right? Yeah. <laughs> People. All right, speaking of people, the word people, whenever you hear people, I want you to shuffle your feet like a crowd of people. And then, whenever you hear the word dance, you're going to go, let's practice. Dance. That's pretty good. That is really pretty good. All right, here we go. Thousands of years ago in Jerusalem, there was a man named King David. He was a great leader for his people. There was a special chest that contained the tablets with the Ten Commandments. King David decided the chest needed to be brought to Jerusalem and sent some people to go get it. As the people brought the special chest, King David led the way. He was wearing only a linen ephod, a special kind of clothing that was little more than a bathrobe. All the while, King David went before the chest and danced for the Lord with all his might. Some of the people thought this was very undignified behavior for a king. One woman was very critical of King David that he would dance in front of all the people where it's a little more than a bathrobe. But King David was wild about God and decided to dance with even more energy to the glory of God. So simple little Bible story, great, uh, fun way to do it. Uh, you can do it with a lot of Bible stories. I've done that with Daniel in the lion's den, the kids in the roar. So using sound effects, that's a great way. Another way you can, um, if you're doing a choir concert, have a, 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 a kids do vocal sounds and body percussion to retell a Bible story, or use actual um, store-bought percussion instruments to, to tell a Bible story. The kids can actually compose the Bible story. It's a lot of fun. Um, just do a story with a lot of, you know, 
like uh, descriptive words like Zacchaeus. Um, it goes up. You can have someone play like or the, the bells do 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 do. Then Zacchaeus climbed down. Do 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 do. I mean, there's tons of ways to use uh, instruments and body sounds and vocal sounds for Bible stories. It's a lot of fun. All right, here's another brain break. Everybody stand up, please. This is another oldie but goodie. And uh, start by touching your toe and saying toe, toe, toe me, 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 chest, chest nut, nose, I love you. The song. There's multiple ver variants of this, but he goes toe, toe me, chest, nut, nose, I love you. Toe me, nose, toe me, nose, toe me, chest, nut, nose, I love you. So this is good. Just get the body going, get the blood flowing. You got seven minutes left of rehearsal. You can see the meter is running out on the kids, and you need to get them moving. Okay. So last time we practiced, we did something where we we could do the different tempo indicators. How about this time we do something with dynamics? Let's do it pianissimo. Okay. Tommy Chestnut knows I love you. Tommy knows. Tommy knows. Tony Chestnut knows I love you. That's what Tony knows. You can mix it all up. All right, have a school at our church, and I love you to do it, and I always have a box, and the box always has something in it, like it could be a shell, or we're going to talk about baptism, or it can be a, a bunny doll, or we're going to talk about fruit and spirit and gentleness, and I always start with a song, uh, and it goes like this, mm -hmm. what's in the box today, what's in the box today, tell us, tell us, tell us, please, <laughs> what's in the box today, let's sing it. What's in the box today? What's in the box today? Tell us, tell us, tell us, please. What's in the box today? And so and this one, I actually did one on gentleness, and we t I actually got the, the bubbles, and I tried to blow them, and nothing happened. They just kind of foam went everywhere. Let me try that again. And the harder you blow, so you got to be gentle, be very sweet and very gentle. And we had the same thing with the... Little bunny. It was a puppet with a bunny in a can. So he makes the puppet with a bunny in a watering can. And, bunny, get out of here! And the bunny don't want to come out, so you got to be really gentle. So that's a little fun thing you can do. You can do it with music symbols. You can have a, a treble clef in there and play. If you want to do music, if you want to do a, some of the sacred symbols of the faith, like a flower or a butterfly, and it's a great way to work in a lesson with an object as opposed to an object lesson. You don't have time to go into how those are two different things. Uh, just suffice to say, um, a lesson with an object is when you use the object for what it is rather than for what it represents. When you start getting a representative language with kids, you're going to lose them. They're concrete thinkers. They're really smart, but they're concrete thinkers. But the other reason I wanted you to say, I wanted you to have a song in your head. So what's in the box today? Uh, what's in the box today? What's in the box today? You know the one we did with the puppet? Sorry, it's in the last five minutes, and I've become a real fast talker in the last five minutes. Um, is a, there's another game you can play that's, that helps limit the reps, and this is what I learned from when I was doing my student teaching. So this is another oldie but goodie. No, this is mine. I, I've stolen everything. No, that's okay. Um, but what you do is you have the kids with their music, and, and you have them follow along, and I'm going to stop, and you tell me what word I stop on. So I'm going to go... It's another game. And you start it by saying, let's play a game. I'm going to da 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 and you tell me what word I stop on. Oh, and they love that game. And then with like really long chunks, you say, okay, so now I'm going to start at the halfway point so you're not, <clears throat> you're not just completely dreaming. All right, we know how this first part goes, Mr. Martin. All right, um, Bumblebee warm up. That's just simply just, okay. Buzz. <laughs> Ooh. 
It's just simple. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it's, great. it's just simple, but it's just a great way to get them vocalizing and just, to get, and also to watch the conductor. It just works on two skills at once. It's not the most creative, fun thing ever, but it's, it, you know, it's better than do 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 bum bum. Um, all right. This is another uh, repertoire. We, I, I covered the repertoire session. I will say that, um, just looking at that, some of the artworks on the arc is a phenomenal, 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 fun, fun, fun song to do. Uh, Child of the Universe is the complete opposite of that. It's a beautiful lyrical piece. Um, I, have, I wanted to have a lot different songs on there. God made it so. Great Terry Taylor song. It's a great way. It's about the creation. It's a great way to start this, this school year with that song. Kids know it after one rehearsal. Uh, I can do all things because of shameless self promotion, and um, and the tree song by Ken Miedema, which is great. We do that every year, and the, the kids and the dads sing it, or the kids and special friends sing it on Mother's Day every year. And you can just set your watch to the to the tears. But the point I wanted to make with the repertoire is, if they love it, they'll learn it. Doesn't just mean fun. There, it's it's meaningful. I think I hope I've tried to convey that that. Some, that um, that them loving it isn't just about, oh, well, we played a game. Oh, we did a fun song. It, when they can sing meaningful music, when they can have meaningful experiences, uh, they will love it because of that as well. Also, we have really good subject matter, don't we? God's love, God's unconditional love, the, the Jesus is our friend who is there for us, our Savior. That's a pretty good message. So rely on that. Don't underestimate the power of that. And sometimes the best thing we can do for the kids to love it is get out of the way of that. Right? Um, all right, so you've got like, let's say two minutes left, and you're about at the end, but you, you, you don't want to just have the kids, or, or even more so, let's say you're one of those that you have to have rehearsal on Sunday mornings, because that's when you can do it, and you never know how long the sermon's going to go. Um, I work with, in the children's wing every Sunday, and let me tell you, it's just, oh. um, there's a fun, simple game to do. So I need somebody who is going to be it. And um, in this case, since we're all grown-ups, you can actually go out in the hall. If it was another kid, I wouldn't just send them in the hall by themselves. I'd have them in the corner, hiding, doing an office. But can I ask somebody to be it? Who wants to be it? Come on, somebody. All right, come on. You'll be it. So if you'll go right out in the hall. So what we're going to do... Let it get out. <laughs> this game is called... Who's the conductor? Yeah, who's the conductor? So I'm going to pick somebody to be the conductor. The conductor's going to play different instruments. Like flute violin, then they may switch to guitar, or they may switch to trombone, try and switch a lot, switch over to harp, and the rest of us, and we have to watch the conductor and play whatever the conductor's playing while they're playing it, and every time the conductor switches, we all have to switch too, now here's the deal, it's going to come back in and try to figure out which one of you is the conductor, so conductor, you need to be kind of sly about when you change, and the rest of us can't be just looking right at the conductor the whole time, it'd be a dead giveaway. So do I have somebody who'd like to be the conductor? Okay, so you're the conductor, so start playing. And I'm going to let it back in. And everybody play whatever the conductor's playing. And conductor, try to switch up as often as you can without getting caught. All right? Okay, come back in. So one of these people is the conductor. They are leading and everybody's watching them and switching when the conductor switches. Your job is to find out who the conductor is. Yeah, it's a big group. So this may be this may be tricky. into the stories that we're, and the messages that we're going to try and convey, so don't take those decisions lightly. Um, I hope I've given you at least a little bit of something. Um, any questions? Wanna... Okay, great. So enjoy your 15 minutes off.